Now it's not going to be as high up as everybody else, but you can put. Well, that'll help. That'll help the the. Uh, yeah, audio. yeah. This toy piece is going to help you a little bit too, leaving that on there. Because, do you, do you can you unscrew it from your? I've never actually unscrewed this thing. I don't know if it'll still work. Or it well, what you're going to do is just slide it. You know, you, here or put it right in this one. Got it. Even even this one in the front, you may not, you may not have. Go ahead, screw it back on for a sec. I think if you put it right in the front here, and it's on right now. Yeah. It says RF mute. Off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Yep. Okay, so here, let's see if we can just. No, okay, so this one, uh, I don't want to mess everybody else up. I'm not yeah. sure how this thing unscrews, but hold on a second. Thank you for helping me. Sure, okay. Um, not perfect you know it'd be better if it was yeah, higher it up but oh, you know what that's not bad right there yeah. if somebody knocks it it could slide but should be, good. Should be able to hear it you got an earpiece uh, no, I don't. okay I all right i'm going to talk into it go ahead audio check audio check audio check one two one two okay Testing, testing, one, two, three. <laughs>
Well, thank all of you uh, for joining us. I'm really pleased to be here with Senator Cardin and Congressman Raskin. Uh, we just had a great meeting with Team NIH, uh, and we toured the Vaccine Research Center. Uh, before we talk about the coronavirus, I do want to take a moment to say what a national treasure we have here in the National Institutes of Health. Uh, and visiting here and talking to the scientists uh, make you understand why this is such an important national investment. And so I do want to just mention the names of some of the folks that who we spoke to. We saw Dr. Larry Tabak. He's the uh, deputy director of NIH. Uh, the director is right now is in Alabama. Uh, and from the team at the Vaccine Research Center, we saw Dr. Mascola, Dr. Graham, Dr. Corbett, uh, Dr. Fauci is down at the White House, uh, but we had a great uh, discussion uh, with this team uh, here. And of course, this is a national issue, which is also a uh, come here to the state of Maryland. Uh, we had three cases uh, here in Montgomery County uh, last night. Uh, I know that uh, Senator Card and I have both been in touch with Governor Hogan. We're working on this in terms of Team Maryland. Uh, we've all been we've been in touch with the county executive, Mark Elrich, uh, who spoke earlier today. 
Uh, but let me just give you, quickly give you some impressions and then uh, Senator Cardin and Congressman Raskin will, will share theirs. Uh, this is the place where you do the research uh, to develop the diagnostics, the therapeutics, and the vaccines. Uh, most of our conversations centered around the vaccines. And this is the place uh, where they took the information that they learned about the virus that came from China, they got it off of the internet, and began the effort to develop the antibodies. This is the place that happened. They had already been doing some work on coronavirus, which was good, a little bit of a head start. But here's where they brought it. And then next week, next week, they will begin the trials, phase one trials uh, in Washington state on about 40 people. These will be on healthy adults. Uh, that will take two to three months. And after that, uh, they will do phase two trials with a larger population uh, expected to include uh, people who are older uh, and more vulnerable. And once you do phase one and phase two trials, uh, then you move to the efficacy phase. Lots of discussions with FDA, which of course uh, is not far from here, as to how you take the information learned from the trials uh, and ultimately get it to vaccine. As you've heard from Dr. Fauci, uh, he anticipates that to be somewhere taking up to one year and maybe a year and a half. Uh, this, this form of the coronavirus uh, may well be with us for several seasons. Uh, and so uh, while it will take that time, and I should say they're moving quickly, very quickly for developing a vaccine by historical standards, uh, but this virus could be with us for many seasons. And so it's important to make sure it's efficacious, it's, it's safe and um, it does what it's supposed to do. So that was our focus. Again, I just wanna close by saying what, a, what an amazing national resource this is here. And when you talk to these scientists, uh, that really comes through. Of course, they will partner with industry, with Moderna in the case of the vaccine, with others as well. But this is really where it all starts. Uh, and without the work here at NIH, uh, we would not be developing the therapeutics we, we have and will work on or the vaccine. Let me now turn it over to, to Senator Cardin. It was all like uh, we were back in our uh, biology classes uh, asking a lot of questions. All right. Well, let me thank Senator Van Hollen for, for arranging this visit. Uh, it's good to be here with Congressman Raskin. Uh, I must tell you, uh, the people that work at NIH, they're the best in the world. We have the world experts on this subject. I am proud of the fact that the Maryland Congressional Delegation has made funding at NIH a top priority. This goes back for as long as I've been in the United States Senate and also when I was in the House. And as a result of the prior work done by NIH, they're in a position to respond in record time to the coronavirus as far as developing a vaccine. So we will, this will be the fastest vaccine of its time ever really developed, but it's gonna take time. We gotta recognize that. So we, we need to, to deal with the current crisis. Yesterday, the United States Senate, uh, the House had previously passed the day before the supplemental appropriation bill. We took the president's number, which was anywhere between one and two billion, depending on how you did the bookkeeping. And we made it 8.3 billion, two billion of which comes to NIH for doing vaccine research so that we can stay on the cutting edge. We need to fund those programs. We're also providing $2 billion for our state and local governments. As Senator Van Hollen said, we've been in touch with Governor Hogan. We know that he has asked for emergency money from the state, but we need to make sure that there's funds available so that our local health agencies can have the capacity to deal with the, this uh, virus. Uh, this funds will allow for us to have the test kits available in our community, which we're in the process of getting now, in addition to the public health hospitals. We're backfilling the protective gear, billion dollars for that. But So there's a lot of things going on to try to keep people safe, but we are so proud today to just try to understand how our previous investments paid off big dividends and what they're doing today. One last point. There's a great deal of public investment in making sure we get the vaccines and we're also hopeful we can get therapeutic drugs. We have a responsibility to make sure it's available as soon as possible and affordable and covered by insurance. And that's also our commitment to make sure that we have a fair distribution and affordability in our community. And with that, I'll turn it over to Congressman Raskin.
Thank you, Senator Cardin. Thank you, Senator Van Hollen, for your leadership here. Um, we want the people to know that government is working together at every level to have a coordinated and effective response to the coronavirus. Uh, we've spoken with uh, Governor Hogan. We've spoken with County Executive Elrich. We've spoken with the local uh, health authorities here in Montgomery County, and we just uh, conducted this visit um, with uh, the Vaccine Research Center. And uh, it's a, an enormously impressive group of leading research scientists and doctors. Um, and uh, Dr. Mascola and Dr. Corbett and Dr. Graham are completely on the case. And uh, as the senator said, uh, it will be a year or a year and a half until uh, we get what we want as the public, which is the actual vaccine. But they're working every single day to go through every step as quickly as possible uh, to bring the, the vaccine to market with the private sector. Um, we also uh, need to say here that it, that it is the public investment that we have made in the past in NIH that has made it possible for us to be where we are in getting a vaccine ready in, let us hope, a year, which would be record time. And it was because we made the investment in the researchers, the scientists and the doctors here at NIH, here uh, at the Vaccine Research Center, that we're going to be able to get the job done. It's the work that they did uh, on the MERS crisis coming out of 2013 and the continuing research that has allowed them to move with dispatch to deal with this outbreak of the coronavirus, which is in the same family of diseases that uh, we saw the outbreak with MERS back in 2013. I'm delighted that um, the House and the Senate have now acted together to pass the $8.3 billion funding package that will uh, fund both work at the state and county level, but also at NIH to continue uh, the vaccine uh, research and also to allow for telemedicine and a number of other innovative strategies. Um, I, I'll close just with the thought that we know uh, that the viruses will continue to come every year the way that the flu comes every year. That means that we should not be in a situation of having to do supplemental emergency appropriations every year when there's an outbreak. We should be able to plan for these viruses to come. We need to get on top of it. And I'm just delighted that I get to represent NIH along with the senators because it's NIH which is allowing us to get on top of this cycle so uh, we are not thrown back every time uh, it occurs, but rather we're ready and we're prepared and the people are prepared for this part of life. So uh, just uh, to, to emphasize uh, again what our colleagues said about the investment that had previously been made in NIH, uh, because there have been proposals uh, that we've seen coming to Congress uh, for years to cut our investment in NIH. Uh, Congress on a bipartisan basis uh, has rejected proposed cuts increased the budget. Uh, last year we provided over $40 billion, and that sustained funding uh, is essential to be prepared uh, to respond. Uh, what we heard was cycles of boom and bust uh, are the worst things for scientists. You need to be able to plan ahead. That's what we did. Finally, uh, the state of Maryland received $500 million uh, from CDC uh, because of the uh, three cases we have uh, here. And finally, uh, we did talk, in addition to vaccines, about therapeutics. Uh, as you may have heard, there was a, a company that had begin to, begun to develop a therapeutic in response to Ebola uh, many years ago. Um, it was that, that particular therapeutic was not successful with respect to Ebola, but there, it is in testing now uh, over the next couple months. Um, and that therapeutic uh, could be available um, at some point after that. It's important to keep distinct the timelines people talk about from therapeutics versus the vaccine. Happy to try to answer any questions that you've got. Well, as I said, uh, we've, we've been in touch with both Governor Hogan as well as the county executive to make sure that we have a, a federal, state, and local response along with healthcare providers. Uh, it, all, these cases 
have been handled in just the right way. Um, as soon as uh, they were identified as potential uh, folks who had contracted the virus, they got they were they had their samples sent to the state labs. Turned out that they were positive. Uh, they've they've been essentially cooperating with the quarantine. The state is now doing the tracing to try to determine other people they may have come in contact with in the meantime. But we, I think we're all confident that um, given the passage of the $8.3 billion bill, the resources will flow to Maryland and other places uh, that need them. Can I just add one yeah. thing to that? The, um, the, the three cases that we're, we've seen in Montgomery County are consistent with uh, the, um, the other cases that have been seen in different parts of the country, which is they're based on travel. And these people were specifically on a cruise ship. So they're now under house quarantine. As Senator Van Hollen says, there's contact tracing taking place with respect to all of them. You know, I, I've been very cheered by the response of our constituents today. I've spoken to a, a whole bunch of constituents, and we have a very educated and serious and compassionate population here. People want to make sure first that these three people are doing okay and they're on the road uh, to recovery. And people also want to make sure that the health authorities are on top of the situation, and they very much are so. So I think that Montgomery County can be one of the places that models the best kind of response using science, using medicine, and using government. And if nothing else, this coronavirus outbreak reminds us of why we need government. We need government in order to have a coordinated, unified, and effective response to problems like this. Sure, take a quick crack at it, and I, my colleagues may. Uh, so you're, you, you want to check the safety of it, if, first and foremost. Um, and you want to begin in healthy populations, because you don't want to expose people who may be older or more vulnerable to something that is, is not safe. Um, and based on the work they've done here, they're very confident that the first round will be safe. It's going to be 40, 40 people. It's going to be conducted in Washington state. Once you do it in that healthy population. Then you do another one with more people, um, including el more elderly people, uh, 500 people maybe, uh, and that's a phase two trial. But the answer is yes for safety purposes. And then you do other studies for efficacy purposes as well um, in the broad population to try to make sure that it succeeds in blocking transmission of, of the disease. I understand that it typically takes a couple years to get go through the trials on a vaccine. Uh, are, they are really moving this along mainly because they have a lot of data related to these types of viruses as a result of previous work that has been done here at NIH. But the second uh, phase trials are for a longer period of time because you have to tr track how well people are doing. And you normally have people who are exposed. We don't know if that'll be the case or not. So it's a lot of question marks. It's not just up to NIH. You also have uh, the CDC, you have FDA, you have other groups that are involved in analyzing the data before you can make it available to the public. And if, I, if I can just add one, I think the senators did a great job of describing the, um, the, the trial process, which includes a trial for safety and then a trial for efficacy. Um, the one additional part is you need to have a control group. So you have a placebo population, so you have something to compare it to because what we're testing here is a vaccine and not just, not treatment, not therapeutic. Talk about tests? Testing kits. Testing kits. Well, the, the, the testing kits, so we understand, we have a capacity at the public labs, uh, and that's where the testing has been done to date, including here in Maryland. The labs located in Baltimore, they have nationwide a capacity for about 75,000 tests at our public labs, but there's a protocol within public health as to who can be tested using the public labs. There are people who, are their travel, or where they, who they contacted with, their symptoms. This week, we have now made available to the private labs the testing kits. They are now 
being delivered as we speak. It will have a capacity for a total of about a million tests to be given. Now, the protocol for that will be determined by your point of contact, the doctors you talk to, as to whether a, a test is warranted or not. But now it can be done at a private lab as you do your normal test, and it can be done rather quickly, within a day. So it, it's a much better way of handling it. It will take several days, if not a couple of weeks, before the protocols are known in the private labs as to how these tests will be administered. So you can't get it today, but we expect within days you will. Good news, and that is it will be reimbursable under Medicare. It will be reimbursable under Medicaid. Blue Cross has announced that they will cover it. We want to make this an essential health benefit, and we want to make sure that it's covered under insurance. Well, let, let me say that uh, this needs to be dealt with as a public health crisis um, and not a political crisis or political problem. I think it's been very clear that, um, at least at the very outset, uh, you had a lot of political messaging coming out of the White House um, and from President Trump uh, when they should have been letting the scientists uh, guide the conversation. Uh, clearly, uh, the, you know, the president's comments about being this, this being a hoax um, were very misleading. Um, we're all hoping that they are now turning um, their public health messaging over to the experts um, and the, the, the scientists that we speak to at places like NIH, because it's very important that people have confidence in the information that they're getting. I, I think we're all pleased with the way this has been handled in Maryland and in Montgomery County. Uh, that's a good model. You mean the particular individuals? So as I, I, one of my colleagues mentioned, uh, these three individuals uh, contracted the disease on a cruise ship. And uh, in terms of where they live, it has not been disclosed for privacy reasons, but we have been 100% assured uh, that they are quarantined and they are making sure they, they abide by all the safeguards. Meanwhile, the state uh, is taking the responsibility for doing the tracing, tracking everybody that they've been in contact with. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, and I don't know to what extent that that, uh, I think all of us would be sort of interested in more information, but from a medical purpose, from medical purposes, we have the information that we need to know. And, and in terms of what all of us need to do, it doesn't make any difference right. what town or city in Maryland they live in. There's a domestic quarantine that's taking place with those people, and the rest of us have to continue to wash our hands, don't shake hands, just give the corona elbow bump. Um, or the thumbs up, whatever it might be, and take the common sense precautions. And uh, what's wonderful about our population is people are not responding with any kind of um, terror and they're not responding with any kind of scapegoating or fear. People are responding uh, with a sense of concern uh, for the public health of everybody. All right, one, one more question. All right. <laughs> So that is exactly why the state is doing the tracing uh, right now. Uh, they're trying to get a uh, exact, you know, all, all the information about people they came into contact with. The early information we have received, and again, it's through uh, the state, is that uh, these individuals did not have a lot of contact with uh, lots of people. That doesn't mean they were never out and about. Uh, but I am sure that uh, I think we're all confident that they are tr doing the tracing um, in an expeditious, uh, in an expeditious way. Uh, the final thing I want to emphasize is we all want to, we all want to make sure that the vaccines and therapeutics, whatever are developed, are provided to everybody who needs them, and uh, that nobody should be deterred from getting them because of cost. And that's especially true. Just to bring it all home, we, we're making a forty billion dollar a year plus investment in federal taxpayers' dollars at NIH. The companies that are developing these vaccines are using 
that research. And that's not just the case with the coronavirus vaccine. That's true with lots of things. I think all of us share the view that when the public is investing that kind of money in developing uh, treatments and vaccines and drugs, then pharmaceutical companies should not be turning around and engaging in price gouging. That's unacceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Are you happy that President, or well done.